Hey everybody, Charles for HumbleMechanic.com. Today we're going to be talking about carbon buildup on direct injection engines. This is episode 80 of the Humble Mechanic Podcast. So as you guys can see, I'm back in the car and I'm super excited to say that I'm back in the Passat. As you guys know, my wife got a new Tiguan, so that means I get my Passat back, which I'm super excited about. Like I mentioned, today we're going to be talking about carbon buildup on direct injection engines. So before we get into the show, let's talk about the sponsor of the day, which is Rain Eater Wiper Blades. Having a good clean windshield is very important. And one of the keys to that is having good quality wiper blades. And when we're looking at wiper blades, we want to look for something that not only cleans the windshield very well, but lasts a long time. And one of the only aftermarket wiper blades that I've found that meets both those criteria is Rain Eater wiper blades. So if you're looking for an alternative to the really expensive factory wiper blades, check out Rain Eater wiper blades at raineater.com. As a matter of fact, I got them on my Passat that I'm driving now. So I keep getting questions about carbon buildup on direct injection engines. And as long as you guys are asking the questions, I'm going to do my best to answer them. The questions that I get are, how does it happen? How do we prevent it? And once we have this issue, what can we do to fix it? Now, like I mentioned all the time, this is not just a Volkswagen Audi slash BMW issue. This is a direct injection issue. This is happening on all direct injected vehicles. So I know a lot of times we want to blame, you know, one manufacturer for a problem. But again, this is not just a Volkswagen issue. There's a lot of theories about why this is happening. One that I've found that I think makes a lot of sense is from the BG guy. And he said what they find is happening is when you shut your engine off, there's a small amount of air and fuel mixture kind of hanging around in the cylinder. And what'll happen is that air fuel mixture will settle on the backs of the valves and it'll create like a varnish on the valves. Well, the next time you drive your car, you have a little bit of oil in the intake stream and that oil will settle and catch on the varnish and then over time harden and build up, build up, build up till you have two or three millimeters of, uh, of build up on the backs of the valves and in the intake ports and eventually cause issues like cold start misfires or misfires in general, as well as decreased fuel economy. There's also the theory about poor crankcase ventilation systems. Basically, they're allowing too much oil in through the intake stream and because you don't have a fuel injector injecting fuel onto the backs of the valves, that oil is catching on the valves and building up that carbon. There's also talks about longer oil change lives breaking down the oil and actually clogging the crank vent system a little bit. And that causes weird crankcase pressure. Again, injecting more oil into the airstream, causing this carbon to build up. It's probably a mixture of all three. But the truth is, it really doesn't matter why it's happening. The fact is that it is happening and you guys need to know what you can do about it to prevent it and then what to do about it once it's already there. So if we want to prevent carbon buildup, there's a few things we can do to help that. One is top tier fuel. Now, I'm going to just say it right up front before we talk about top tier fuel. I don't think top tier fuel will stop or prevent 100% of this from happening. I think it will help. I think you're going to get a more complete combustion out of top tier fuel which may reduce the amount of carbon, especially on the tops of the pistons and on the injector tips. But I don't think that using top tier fuel is going to stop carbon buildup from happening on the backs of the valves. Basically, it can't. Fuel never touches the backs of the valves, so it can't help to wash it away. All the detergent packages in the world can't do anything for it once it's already started. It can, however, affect the tips of the injectors and the tops of the pistons, but it won't do anything once you already have a carbon buildup. This may be, again, a bit of a preventative. A lot of you guys have asked me about the Italian tune-up, which is basically full throttle acceleration on your vehicle. To me, that makes the most sense on reducing the amount of carbon buildup because you're pushing more air through at a higher velocity, so you're going to have less opportunity for that oil to stick to the valves. So what I usually tell people when they ask about the Italian tune-up is that's pretty much what I do on my car every day. I leave work, I get on the highway, which you've seen a few minutes ago, and I generally put the pedal to the floor till I get on the highway. And that's the old, you know, blow the junk out theory. I think that does help on direct injection. We do see less carbon buildup on GTIs than we do on, let's say, Passats and CCs, because I think overall, as a whole for the brand, GTI drivers drive their car a little bit more aggressively than, say, a Passat or a CC. But 
we still see GTIs with carbon buildup as well. So again, this won't prevent 100% of this carbon buildup. Then you have the fuel treatments, the uh, you know snake oil, so to say. Volkswagen has a treatment that they recommend, and what they tell us, there's a technical service bulletin, is when we experience vehicles with cold start misfires, we need to put this fuel additive in the tank recommend the customer use top tier fuel and take it on a very spirited test drive to run some of this cleaner through the system. And for you guys, if you'd like to purchase that, the part number is G001780M3. I'll make sure to put a link in the show notes for you guys where you can pick this up. And it's interesting, this chemical is very thick. It's a lot thicker than gasoline would be. So I was really interested to see how it worked and whether or not it would cure these cold start misfire issues but I've seen it fix exactly zero cold start misfire vehicles. I've added it into probably 20 or so cars, and on the ones that really did have severe cold start misfires, it didn't help one bit. They always came back, and we always had to do a manual cleaning of the carbon. Now, this again may help. This may be a good preventative. This coupled with top tier fuel may prolong that carbon buildup. And instead of seeing it at say 40 to 50,000 miles, Maybe you're seeing it at 70 to 80,000 miles. There's also a lot of other fuel treatments out there. Um, I can't speak to the quality of any of them. I mentioned 44K the other day is what I put in my car, but this is a port injected vehicle, not a direct injected vehicle. So a lot of the, what we're talking about doesn't really apply to my Passat. It does to the Tiguan and we will be doing some testing on that. So what's the fix? How do we get rid of this junk clogging up our engine and making it run bad when, uh, when we first start the car up or decreasing our fuel economy. Well, I mentioned additives. Again, that's not gonna fix it. That may help it a little bit. That may clean the tips of the injectors. That may clean the tops of the pistons, but it's not gonna get rid of the carbon buildup on the backs of the valves. There's also treatments that go through the air intake, things like sea foam. Now, I do think this may help reduce the amount of overall carbon buildup on the backs of the valves, but it's not going to remove it all. Basically, even if you're misting this in, it's not gonna catch all that carbon. You may have to run 30 gallons of sea foam through your engine in order to get all that carbon off. Now, you may get enough of it off to temporarily cure your cold start misfires, but it's not gonna get the backs of the valves clean. Really, the only way to get this handled, to completely take care of the carbon buildup, solving the cold start misfire problem, is a manual cleaning. And that's where we would remove the air intake and use some kind of manual method to clean it. And that could be soaking it and scraping the carbon out. That could be just scraping the carbon out dry, which works pretty well. That could be using a media blaster. We at the shop now are using a, uh, a sand blaster to blast all that junk off of there. And that does a great job. Whenever I do one of these manual cleanings, I also take all four injectors out. I clean the tips of the injectors and I put new injector seals in it. Now I will say I have not had one engine come back where we've had to do a second cleaning. It's always been one cleaning at you know 40 to 80,000 miles and the cars are good from there, but it's taken three or four years to get these mileage, to get this carbon buildup. So it'll really be interesting to see when we have a lot of TSI or even the FSI engines with 130,000 miles, 150,000 miles, to see what kind of impact this carbon buildup is having at that mileage. Now I will say the TSI, the newer generation, um, CCTA and uh, CBFA engine codes are much more of an issue than the BPYs were. The first round of direct injection engine that Volkswagen had, we're seeing a lot more with the TSI than we ever did with the FSI. And that could be a number of reasons. That could be the drivers, that could be the fuel that's out there now versus in 07. There's so many factors that can play a role in this. It's hard to put your finger on one singular issue that if I said, hey, all that would have to happen would be fuels have got to change and there would be no more cold start misfires, there would be no more carbon buildup. There's also the folks that are putting catch cans on their vehicle. And basically what that'll do is that'll route the oil out of the PCV, out of the airstream, and they'll put it in a small canister. Companies like Black Forest sell one, and that adds a little bit of maintenance, so you'd have to dump the canister you know, every 10,000 miles or whatever the interval is. But hey, 
it's better than spending like $700 to have your intake manifold removed and all that carbon cleaned out. So like I said, there's a lot of issues at play with cold start misfires and carbon buildup. I keep mentioning cold start misfires. That is like the number one symptom that you'll find to point in the direction of having carbon buildup on the backs of the valves. So the, the truth is, is it's a design issue with direct injection. Again, it's not just a Volkswagen issue. BMW has had a special tool for years to clean this up and handle their cold start misfire and carbon buildup issues. So until we have companies doing things like adding a port injector or, or individual runner injectors, I don't think a lot's gonna change. It's just going to become a normal part of maintenance on these vehicles. So maybe I'll hit Black Forest up for a catch can on, uh, for the Tiguan and, and do some testing on that and see how that impacts the carbon buildup on my car. Because that's a vehicle my wife's generally gonna drive. Her and I have very different driving habits. I got no problem putting the go pedal to the floor and getting on the highway or driving my car a little bit more spirited where she's a much more conservative driver. I think she would have much more of a likelihood of having carbon issues on the valves than I would. But we'll see. It'll be an interesting experiment. And uh, don't worry, I will definitely share the results with you guys. All right, guys, I'm going to wrap it up there. If you have any questions or comments, post it in the comments section below. Hey, if you like the video, throw it a thumbs up on YouTube. I always appreciate that. You can also subscribe on YouTube or on the blog at HumbleMechanic.com. You can follow me on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, the blog, and obviously here on YouTube. All right, guys, thanks for watching, and I will see you next time. Oh, and I'm driving, so obviously no beer.